Please us come join us in our journey as we seek your will for this community and this environment. Teach us to love each other as you love us, to give ourselves as you give yourself, that the kingdom of God may be made present to all. Amen. Amen. Good. Reverend Hugh Majors uh, used to work at the church center. Uh, he wrote that many scholars think that St. Mark's gospel was set down somewhere between the years 60 and 65 AD. And the presumed primary audience, of course, is the Jewish Christian community, not in Judea, but perhaps in Rome. If these scholarly theories are true, then the story about Jesus's authority takes on a special kind of power and import. If the date of the writing is correct, then Mark's gospel coincides with the first major Roman persecution of the Christians in Rome. Nero, the emperor, singled out the Christians in Rome for serious persecution. This began a trend that ultimately resulted in the empire-wide persecution during the reign of Diocletian. In the story, Jesus demonstrates authority in teaching the scriptures. His authority is basically visible, audible, and amazes those who heard him. Jesus also demonstrates the authority over the demonic. And amazingly, the demon recognized Jesus as the anointed one who was coming into the world, bringing the kingdom of God. He asked Jesus, are you going to kill me? And so imagine if you can that you were a Christian in Rome in 63 AD. You have a Jewish heritage and you're already part of the diaspora, the dispersion of Jews living away from Israel. And so you are uncertain about your religious identity. You will no longer go to the temple in Jerusalem. You believe in Jesus, but you don't know whether this means that you are no longer primarily a Jew or whether this means that you are something else. To complicate the situation, Nero has begun to persecute Christians. In short, the question of religion's authority, authority in teaching scripture is immediate and it's personal. At the same time, the demonic is immediate and personal. The Roman authorities might at any time come and get you. You might be executed in some terrible way, possibly fed to the lions. Imagine hearing this text from Mark's gospel. Two of your serious anxieties are plainly faced. Jesus is the one with the authority to face them and overcome them. Now, many scholars think that Jesus claimed his authority with scripture by teaching it directly. In the typical rabbinical way of teaching of the day, the teacher would discuss all the commentaries on the text. Discussion would be of something like, well, Rabbi Gamaliel says this, and Rabbi Moses says this, Rabbi Simon says this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And finally, the teacher would conclude with his own viewpoint. But Jesus didn't do that. He said, today this text is fulfilled in your hearing. He taught with personal authority. He did not rely on the authority of the teaching tradition. So in confronting the demonic, Jesus exercised his authority to heal. The demon saw Jesus for who he was and is and responded with fear. Jesus' authority over the demonic was powerfully demonstrated. The two displays of authority that have been a source of strength of the Jewish Christian in Rome in 63 AD. But what do they mean in our time? The gospel is always good news, but before we are in it, we don't see it as good. To find meaning in life, to experience the healing of that which is broken, we have to submit to his authority. But it is not in our nature to do that. We're rebellious, but when God gives us the gift of submission, we enter the meaning and the joy that comes through Jesus. Now, William Willimon used to be the former Dean of the chapel at Duke University. He says that today's gospel reminds us that God does more than simply care. God does more than just merely stand beside us in the darkness of our despair. God powerfully reaches out to us, rebukes the demonic evil that has thrown us into this horrible situation and thereby he lifts us up. Sometimes God lifts us up by providing us with good friends to always show up, speak a word of compassion to us, lift us up in ways we couldn't lift ourselves. This too, we believe, is part of God's love. In these first chapters, Mark surely means to show us that the cross of Christ just wasn't a one-time event for Jesus, but was part of his whole ministry. Jesus suffers opposition from humans, from demons, who shout at him and curse him. Jesus suffers for his love for us. This is who God is. The cross is thus like a window into the heart of God. God doesn't pull strings in our lives down here, but that doesn't mean God is absent. 
God is especially here in our times of suffering. I'm sure that there are some here who could probably testify to that truth this morning. But when we suffer, we want to get out of it and away from it as soon as we can. Jesus indicates that God is different from us and that God seems to seek out the sufferers. God tends to wade into the suffering of others and suffer himself. That is very good news indeed. But it means that when we suffer, we are apt to be very close to the suffering God. When we cry out, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's there, right there, we see God with us. Do we see God with us in this pandemic that we're confronted with? Are we willing to surrender all the authority to Jesus to bring us through the pandemic? There's a story we tell in the Kairos prison ministry to the residents on the weekend as we begin the three days together. A peasant farmer was walking to, to the village to sell a bag of wheat. Suddenly, the king's carriage pulled up and the king asked him where he was going. He told the king he was going to sell some wheat. The king asked him if he would give him some of his wheat. The farmer said, okay. And he reached into his bag, took out one little grain, handed it to the king. The king took out his bag of gold, reached in, took out one little coin, and gave it to the farmer and drove away. Then the farmer wondered, if he had given the king the whole bag, would he have given him his whole bag of gold? Something to think about. Are we willing to surrender all to Jesus? All our worries, all the things, the anxieties and the fears and the concerns about the pandemic and the violence that's going on in the world? We're just now beginning the Gospel of Mark but let me tell you how this gospel ends. The God who shows up in Jesus shows up at the end, most clearly and lovingly, not in some lovely forest glade where Jesus relaxes with his good friends. God shows up on the cross, a horrible end for one so good. Where is God? Well, there are crosses, there is God. God didn't stay trapped in his heavenly glory, but came and confronted and squared off with the worst evil the world could give for us and with us. On this first Sunday in Epiphany at his baptism, we hear God say to Jesus, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. And then on the last Sunday in Epiphany on the Mount of Transfiguration, we hear God say to the apostles, this is my son, my beloved, listen to him. That's for us also. Our lesson this morning shows us that Jesus speaks with authority. We have to listen to him. These brackets of the first and the last Sundays of Epiphany show us where the authority comes from. Thanks be to God. Amen.